it's going to be a mullet over Monday. Okay. What do I mean by that? Mullet over Monday. I'm going to give you thoughts. I'm, 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 I might give you my opinion. It'll probably be obvious what my opinion is, but I'm going to give some stuff that's just strictly food for thought. And what am I talking about? As I was going off the air on Friday, uh, our producer, Mr. James Hardy, found a, a Yahoo Sports exclusive article uh, by Pat Forty and Pete Thamel, and it, 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 it seemed like it was just like a bombshell, you know, Article 1 is just going to lead to all kind of chaos. And virtually, I don't know of any players listed that didn't play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so is the article late? Is the NCAA, did these teams just make the decision? You know what? We're this far in the 2017-18 basketball season. There's really not anything going to change with this FBI investigation. If, if we get busted, we're going to get busted, okay? If we don't get busted, we're going to be good, okay? So so I think the NCAA, uh, the college basketball teams just made the decision. Let's just play it out. All but Sean Miller, the head coach at Arizona, who was caught on a wiretap discussing $100,000. So we're going to talk about that conversation I'm going to let you mull it over. There's some NBA guys that have gotten in on it, conversation coaches-wise. You as the fans have gotten in on it. We're going to talk about this pay-for-play. We're going to talk about free education. We're going to talk about the right to earn, image and likeness, agents versus non-agents, going to the league versus coming to college, amateurism versus being a professional player. We're going to – all of that is up on the table. Who, Who pays the money? By the way, James, I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, the players, the, the, this is a public institution and they shouldn't be getting paid. Well, somebody tell me who's paying the money. Is it, is it the institution? Why, why, is, this, why is this not uh, against the rules? Nick Saban makes $10 million a year. Who pays off Nick Saban's mortgage, James? donors to the universe the boosters right so 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 a man making 10 million dollars and and i don't think nick saban makes it on the back of the players in the sense of of he's some type of uh, a slave driver or some type of master of of men in, in that sense but his profession and the execution of his profession at the highest level generates him 10 million dollars directly from 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 the athletic department, then on top of that, he gets he gets the the opportunity, James, to go out and make appearances. Now, what he does with that, that's his business. He he uses, I think Nick Saban uh uses all of his public appearances to go to Nick's kids. But that's he still has the option to do that. He still has the option of what where his money goes. Nick Saban takes that money and opens opens Mercedes Benz um, Birmingham. Just for reference, by the way, Nick Saban's contract: the vast majority of his money comes from uh, non university related sources. I think the university actually only pays him about what two fifty three hundred grand a year, as far as that overall. Um, from the Compens- education compensation package is concerned. Right. So all of the other aspects of who pays the money comes from where? Comes from different sources associated with the athletic department. But he can benefit from that. In the education system, the public education system that always seems to be struggling with finances isn't impacted by that. But a booster can come up and pay off his mortgage, or any other coach's mortgage if they so choose. But a player can get a meal. Hear me out. A player can get a meal paid for and lose his eligibility. By the way, the place where he can't earn a living. (laughs) But a man who can earn a living can get a million-dollar mortgage paid off. 
And I'm not talking about just Nick Saban. I'm talking about college coaches and, and individuals in general. There are – I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. What else are we going to talk about? Is it the NCAA's fault or is it the pro league's fault? Is it the NBA? Is it the NFL? Is it Major League Baseball? Whose fault is it? Who's responsible? Who's culpable in this scenario? And, by the way, is it wrong? Are we are we vilifying people for something that's wrong? Should there be different levels of conversation? Should Colin Sexton, if what is true, James, what he admitted to, should that be in the same conversation as what Sean Miller was working on for Arizona? Should that be in the same conversation? He had a meal. That was compensated by the agent. Another guy got $100,000. But they're still, they both could get the exact same punishment. One guy loses his eligibility for a meal. The other guy loses his eligibility for $100,000. So if you're going to cheat, if you're going to (laughs) cheat, I mean, Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, if I was going to go to jail for robbing something, man, I'd just go straight for the bank. I wouldn't stop at the at the convenience store. If I get caught, I'm going to jail. And that's what some of these guys are doing. They're like, if we're going to take this chance, let's go ahead and go all in. But the question, once again, is, is it wrong? And, James, I have an even better question I, I, I want us to discuss, too. We, we, this has all been about about basketball. But think about this. Is football, with the decisions they're making, headed down the same path as basketball? Now, what do you think the biggest culprit is in basketball? When, it, when you look at this, when you look at basketball and the mess that they're in, is it because high school coaches have zero influence over their athletes that play high school basketball. I mean, for the most part, for the most part, if a kid is a big time college player, a future college player, especially NFL, t- or NBA talent wise, they are they play high school, but who has all the influence? Who has all the power? The AAU coaches. Who is in? the pocket of Nike and Reebok and Adidas and the agents, the AAU coaches, they, they don't have any restrictions around their school. They don't have any affinity there. It's just their team. So these agents go after them. Is that is football headed down that same path with some of the more recent Changes that they've made in the college profession, James. Think about think about what they're doing. They're now limiting how much interaction the coaches can have. Did they pass the rule? Correct me if I'm wrong. Did they not pass a rule that now high school college coaches are limited on the ability to bring the players to camps? So who's going to bring those kids to camp? Nick Saban has said that he wants the majority of his players to come to a camp on campus. Who's bringing those kids? If high school coaches can't bring them, that's going to lead to other people bringing those players to camps. Now, will that be aunts and uncles, moms and dads? Well, a lot of these kids come from situations and circumstances, James, where mom and dad can't. <laughs> Jane, I, I heard this. Well, what's the big deal? Can't mom and dad take them? Uh, yeah, mom and dad can take them. Let me ask you this. Other than a select few people, how many people can afford to take off and afford trips every weekend? Because what you're, what you're saying is you're looking at it as your school. Well, why come the parents can't bring them to Alabama? But this kid isn't committed to Alabama. Nick Saban is asking him to come to a camp. Gus Malzahn is asking him to come to a camp. Jim Harbaugh is asking him to come to a camp. Urban Meyer is asking him to come to a camp. 
Mullins is asking him to come to a camp. Uh, you got uh, Helton at USC asking him to come to a camp. Now you got kids from Florida being asked to come to a camp in Oregon because of crystal ball. Okay, the parents, say the parents have the time and can get off work, James. How do they afford it? <laughs> and when you don't let high school coaches be able to do it where they can bring a whole group of guys at one time, you're asking parents to take off every week or you're asking them to figure out a way. So that's going to lead to the advancement of <laughs> these um, AAU exact ty- type arrangement. The 707s are on their way to becoming AAAU, AAU type of scenarios. And the fact that you're going to take the high school coaches out is football headed down that same path. There's only one major difference between football and basketball that, that, that will slow it down a little bit in football but won't prevent it from happening. It's football you have to wait three years to go. I mean, you, you, you have to wait three years to go. In basketball, it's really, James, these kids have to be eligible one semester in basketball, pass their first semester, then get started on their second semester, and, and, and be in school for, what, a grand total of like six months, seven months? So that agent only has to keep his secret <laughs> quiet for how long? He only has to keep it quiet for six months, a year, once they get eligible. And is the problem that we have, is it based on it being wrong? And last but not least, one in a NBA basketball coach even said that this situation with the NBA is race-based. Remember, this is mullet, mullet over Monday. <laughs> I'm not saying it's race-based. I'm saying what an NBA coach said when it comes to this basketball thing. Is it race-based? You can, hey, 205-342-9904, you can get your thoughts in on it. We're talking about NCAA basketball, agents, image and likeness, pay education, what it takes to earn, who pays the money, And is there a right to earn in this country? And is there a small, small segment of individuals whose right to earn is being taken away? And it's a very limited time on a right to earn. Is it being taken away? Is that fair, unfair? What are your thoughts right here on the Blitz 205-342-9904? 